Hello YouTube friends and welcome to my channel. So in this video, it is my pleasure to show you the unboxing and the first look of a new real steel knife that I recently got. And yes, I'm still working on my backlog uh, uh, regarding the my carton knives from real steel because uh, they did release some really nice uh, knives in back in 2023. And some also are uh, unfortunately deal exclusives. So I have to I have to uh, order them uh, from United States, but Finally, I got my hands on the Pathfinder. So this is the Pathfinder folder. The model number is 7851B. And this is what I would say a really nice uh, large uh, folding uh, bushcraft or you can see here uh, outdoors knife. So I'm really happy that they released this. It basically has a companion piece, which is a fixed blade. So here are some information, but we are going in depth uh, and some information about the different uh, designs, what they are using. This is interesting. They uh, the axis lock version they call it the side lock, but uh, yeah, it's definitely a crossbar lock, which is the universal name for the axis lock which was a Benchmade invention and it did expire and the patent expired so now everybody can uh, can modify or use uh, this uh, lock type as you can see here right there its ports are really nice brown micarta scales I'll be comparing uh, this one with uh, different uh, versions uh, late in the video so as you can see this is a really nice full-size large knife I excel size hands so definitely a large beast of a knife the designer is called Ivan the uh, Braginets hopefully I did not uh, butchered his name if I have sorry about that and um, this is also a, a great part from uh, from real steel so that I partner up with uh, uh, really really uh, for me unknown uh, knife uh, designers and they gave them a chance to uh, to design a knife uh, most of them are practically uh, used knives so uh, either for bushcraft or EDC or so on so not uh, some kind of futuristic sci-fi looking knife that, that some companies are doing I'm looking at you Tucson of course <laughs> uh, so now uh, let's see the specification so we have an overlink of 22.4 centimeters that is 8.8 .8 inches so almost 9 inches long. The blade is 9.6 centimeters or 3.8 inches. The blade width is 2.7 centimeters or 1.1 inch. Thickness of the blade is 3 millimeters or 0 0.11 inches. Handles 12.8 centimeters or 5 inches long with a thickness of 1.4 centimeters or 0 0.55 inches. On the blade we have uh, a Swedish uh, they are, they, are, they are telling us that it is made by Alaima uh, 14C20N, a really nice uh, all around EDC steel, which has a uh, satin and uh, stone washed uh, double tone uh, finish on it. And is a drop on configuration. Uh, yes, I looked it up. It is not a straight back because it swoops down. So technically, it is a drop point with a really nice uh, Scandi flat grind. You can see right there. So it looks like almost zero grind, but uh, but it has a small secondary uh, bevel right there. On the handles we have, like I mentioned, canvas micarta, the natural uh, style one, so it is not treated with any kind of oils or a polishing compound. Liners are stainless steel. Uh, backspacer is also almost full backspacer. Oh, that's a really nice micarta right there. We have a uh, nicely uh, large skeletonation triangle uh, looking shape uh, pockets uh, milled through completely to give it, of course, uh, a lighter uh, overall package. Now, for the lock we have, uh, like I mentioned, the crossbar lock or axis lock, so you can fling it out if you like, but I will not probably recommend that. 
As far as opening goes, uh, we are left to the thumb studs, and for some reason, I this will be a little bit of a negative on this part because I have to point out pros and cons, of course. Uh, the little bit negative is here that, as you can see here, uh, they did mill out a little portion or of the of the micarta, but not that much. So uh, sometimes you can slip if you not push uh, really hard on the stud itself and also for some reason they uh, they don't and round it the thumb stud so there are not that much purchase area for your thumb uh, they are a little bit of uh, a same milling portions here but they do probably nothing in my opinion so i don't know why uh, they they use small thumb studs and not a raised one a little bit uh, larger and not a bit some kind of, of of texturing and definitely uh, definitely um, uh, a real steel can uh, use this one but if you push down and up then there are no problems so uh, we have a stop pin a fixed stop pin right there a little bit of um, I would say cosmetic jimping because this is also smooth. A uh, fuller. I know what the purpose is. You can definitely pinch it with your fingernails if you like, but yeah. Maybe, uh, let me see. Maybe the intention uh, was that in some uh, countries that they do not allow one-handed opening then you can uh, take down the, the thumb studs and maybe open it uh, that way but in that uh, they could uh, mill down the portion here to be more accessible so I don't know what the, the intention but this is completely uh, um, the purview of the designer so he designed this knife and probably uh, probably real still did not uh, uh, spoke into into his uh, designing uh, language so yeah it is what it is but we have also a really nice uh, concave style of uh, of the pivot screw right there as you can see a little, little bowl shape on both sides so this is really nice it will not stick out that much you can definitely feel it a little bit no problems there and uh, now uh, let's see the apocalypse so the apocalypse is truly a true deep carry design uh, with I would say medium yeah this is a medium stiffness and it is MB so uh, my left-handed user uh, friends uh, rejoice this one is a completely truly ambidextrous uh, knife that you can you can use and enjoy in the wildness or in your EDC tasks so, or uh, we have also flush screws there are inset and the mounting is uh, inside uh, the, the scale so they give us also a little bit this uh, detail is uh, really nice so they give you a little bit of filler tab so that if you don't uh, have the pocket clip mounted in uh, on the opposite side and no dirt and grime will uh, collect there so really nice attention to details uh, we have also a really nice, uh, a generous lanyard hole right there. So if you are a lanyard person, then also good for you. Uh, smooth operation, of course. Uh, uh, let me check if these right on ball bearings. This no, these are probably on the washers. Let me check my notes. Um, yeah, it has brass washers, so definitely, uh, if you are designing a knife for outdoors, then you would like to mitigate as many uh, failure points as possible and uh, yeah, uh, high speed bearings uh, could definitely be a problem if uh, dirt and grime will uh, accumulate inside so yeah, nicely designed okay now uh, let's see the sharpness of the box oh yes, yeah, this is this is beyond sharp so <laughs> really nicely, nicely made Okay, this is probably not uh, necessary, but uh, let's try.
try the lock itself. Let me try to not cut myself or the camera. Okay. Well, this is definitely really nice and, and sturdy. Yeah, the exit lock is uh, crossbar lock is proven design through the years, so you should be uh, you should be not have any kind of problems. But of course, uh, I would not suggest to abuse this knife because everything can fail uh, fail, and uh, so it can also this one. Also, one uh, probably also a, a a negative that I have to point out uh, since I'm. An, uh, Looking at this knife, uh, being this a outdoor or uh, let's say more a bushcraft knife, I do not understand why uh, they did a full um, backspacer. Maybe they don't want it to, uh, to moisture uh, get uh, inside from your hand, but since these are nice, probably uh, for 20 stainless steel liners, I would uh, prefer to have a open construction to blow through because. Uh, let's face it if you are out there uh in the um, into the into the wilderness or on adventures or even if you are only uh, carry this knife in your pocket uh grime dirt lint any kind of uh fabric uh, residual stuff can accumulate inside and having a close of construction it will be definitely much more uh, problematic to uh, to clean it out so i don't know uh Definitely does not contribute to to better, uh, let's say, comfort. It is a little bit raised, so maybe that was the intention to, to give it a a resting place to not uh, create a hot spot. But let me tell you, this is a really comfortable knife. I a little bit of the the pocket clip does poke uh, out, and you can definitely feel it. But if you have it in your right hand, like I have, then I don't know if any hot spots. So. Okay, so, but uh, I left. Uh, I leave this to the designer. He knows what he's doing. So, who I am to uh, contradict his design? Uh, as you can see, the pocket profile is exceptionally well hidden. Uh, I would prefer to have it a matte, uh, kind of black or gray finish uh, because this is a little bit shiny and it can. can put your attention into the pocket uh, but nonetheless no problems there medium tension it will go inside the pocket with any problems and also skeletonization this is another attention to the high details that uh, uh, real steel is known for I know if this was the probably it was the the designers choice but yeah it's really nice to, to have something like uh, that so the weight is 131.5 grams or 4.6 ounces. So definitely with all those uh, milled out portions and cutouts, uh, they try to, to reach the under the five uh, ounce uh, uh, mark. And uh, yeah, that is uh, really nice. So now let's talk a little bit about the pricing. So uh, these are priced at uh, $79. That is the street price. Uh, I cannot find the MSRP. Here in Europe, you are uh, looking to pay around 80 to 86 uh, euros. Definitely a really bargain price if you consider how a large uh, knife you are getting with a really decent, really good, decent uh, stainless steel. Uh, if you are looking to, to get the, the fixed blade, then uh, that is even uh, even uh, less expensive. At uh, the overall size is 9.6 uh, uh, inches. Uh, compared with 8.8 .8, so you are getting almost an inch of a, uh, a larger knife for 71 dollars i did not check the the european pricing but uh, since uh, these are really similar you are probably are looking to, to pay around uh, 70 uh, 71 or or 75 uh, euros okay so now let's see a few kinds of comparisons so i brought out some of my large uh, my carter knife so here's Hack or the wall snap hack. I hope to uh, to sell it. How to how to uh, pronounce it? Then uh, one of my older knives, the Zandu uh, YX751. 
the Yonzandu uh, factory did not produce a lot of uh, knives lately, so I don't know if they are taking OEM work, but uh, it reminded me. So if you are looking uh, for, let's say around $50, these were around 49 to 50, uh, 50 euros, if I'm not mistaken, then you are getting a uh, well, uh, really well-made knife. And uh, this is also 14C20N. It has not a uh, deep carry pocket clip and also has a G10 backspacer for some reason, I don't know why, but as you can see, uh, there is uh, there are possibilities out there to get a similar knife if you don't have the money. And uh, I'm all about to give you the, the options since uh, money is, uh, is always uh, an issue. And if you're looking for uh, nice knives, then you can check my uh, comparison uh, of videos here. So uh, here is the Ace Ground, uh, a giant mouse Ace Ground. A little bit smaller, but uh, with what I say, pretty similar my Carter type, the Bestech Slasher. Let me compare these two. And like I mentioned, uh, this is the the good Chinese quality micarta they have been using on this one a little bit different than they used in the past because uh, here is the full size g slip and as you can see this one has the really nice norplex micarta from the united states as you can see definitely a different kind of uh, of micarta there not that this is bad or this is superior i would not uh, say that because i've not done any kind of testing but as you can see, uh, they are branching out, or maybe they had uh, some issues to getting uh, the enough quantities micarta in, so they uh, swapped to the to the better uh, Chinese uh, micarta than, for example, the the OG China carta, which I uh, I like to uh, to compare here uh, here uh, my video. So this is one of the first production. Uh, Chinese uh, natural stein canvas micarta that was used on a production knife by Kaiser. This is the OG uh, pinch. Now uh, let's continue with a, a linen type of micarta on this Kaiser Beglighter 2. I have here also a fixed blade which is the CVV uh, Tamashi, a Bob Terzula design. As you can see, this is the same type of micarta, but uh, polished. There shines through some uh, rubbed off unpolished uh, part right there. But if I'm using the knife, uh, it will get uh, a little bit darker, the shade will. Okay, let's continue. Uh, here is the PT5 Fish 4949, the Warrior. So this is also the, the same uh, supplier, in my opinion. Then let's see the large Griptilian from Benchmade, the OG Axis Lock uh, design. Now, here is another. Uh, USA made my carta on this production uh, paramilitary too. Benchmade uh, Griptilian. Oh, sorry, Benchmade bug out. Two more. So the QSP Penguin and also the CV Elementum, they are sporting the same uh, brown or a little bit orangey looking uh, micarta. Here we can see if it is saturated, how it will be looking through. I see the, the difference. Okay, let's see some more 
little bit larger knife so here is the recon one from cold steel knives and my tr4 from protec these are all a large knife of course let's see the the previous uh one of the hall of fame uh, outdoors uh, knife uh, that are uh, in my opinion still one of the best values on the market is the red uh, model one so this is a, a knife uh, center exclusive and uh, unfortunately the ontario uh, ontario knife company was sold but uh, i did hear some information that uh, they will be uh, still producing uh, the knives. The Blue Ridge knives uh, did bought the company, and uh, we will see how many the how many the production will stay in the United States and how many will be outsourced to Taiwan and, and China, of course. But if you like to to have one, you can probably uh, uh, still get these because uh, they are still on stock with different uh, configurations and uh, different uh, knife uh, dealers. So, Red Model One. And here is the Spyderco uh, Endura. So uh, let's see the peanut and let's close it down with the K bar Dozier Folding Hunter. Okay, so overall, uh, really, uh, really good uh, value proposition, in my opinion, for such a large knife uh, at around uh, 80 euros 79 dollars you can definitely go uh, no wrong so if you if you don't mind uh, those uh, little uh, things like the thumb studs and uh, uh, what's uh, the the backspacer then i would strongly just go with them as far as uh, variants go you can uh, you can get it in uh, in blue green and this brown micarta and uh, uh, there are no other uh, options available at this moment, but maybe in the future. So, okay, so with that being said, I would like to thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please leave comments down below. I'm more than happy to reply as soon as I can, of course. If you are a subscriber, thank you very much. Big thumbs up to you. And if you're not a subscriber, then please consider subscribing to not miss any future videos. With that being said, wish you a wonderful day. Hope to see you soon. Bye.